Are you approaching the end of your trading? Perhaps there's only a few months or weeks before you're due to CCT. In this video, I'm going to share with you what it's like to work as a seasonal GP. I'm going to share with you my experience of transitioning from a GP registrar to an independent GP working as a locum GP. If you're planning your career post CCT, then you don't want to miss this video. Thank you for stopping by this video. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Dr. Owen Kwan. I'm on a mission to help doctors lead a happier and fulfilled life. I make new videos every Thursday on the subject of GP training, well-being and high performance. Every Thursday I publish a new video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified first each time I publish a new video. Once you have completed training, there are different avenues you could explore with your career. You could work as a salary GP, you could work as a locum GP, or you could go into a partnership and become a GP principal. Each career option has its pros and cons. If you're working as a salary GP, you will have a secure job and you will have a constant flow of um, income every month. If you're working as a locum GP, you might not have the same security. Um, if you're working as a partner, then you will have a piece of a business. You have um, more upside. Um, because you will also take a share of the profit of the business. So depending on what you want to do and what are your aspirations, then um, you need to think about which career will fit you. Many newly qualified GPs choose to start off low coming after CCT. The reason for that is it's a good opportunity to learn from different practices and see how they work and meet other colleagues and see whether you would fit in a practice. So um, I chose to start off low coming after finishing my training and um, the reason for that is because of the flexibility because I'm not sure whether I wanted to jump into a salary GP job um, without knowing much about what's available. So it's a good way to actually transition from a GP registrar to an independent GP because um, you have more flexibility and you can choose what you want to do. What are the pros and cons of a sessional GP? There are many pros being a sessional GP. You get to decide where you want to work, when you want to work, and how you want to work. As a locum GP, you get to choose which practices you want to work, where you want to go to work, how far do you want to travel, if you want to travel, half an hour from where you live, or if you want to go further away, um, that's something that you can decide. You can also choose when you want to work. If there's a month you don't want to work and you want to take four weeks off, you can also do that without asking permission as a locum GP. You can also choose how you want to work. You can negotiate with the practice what types of work that um, you're willing to do and what will work for you and the practice. For example, there are some locums that may not do any household, that may not do any repeat prescription or actioning bloods or males. They only consult patients. So you can decide the terms and conditions of work that you're prepared to do. There are also disadvantages of locuming. As a locum, you don't benefit from the same employment benefit rights that a salary GP may have. For example, you may not have paid annual leave or paid maternity or paternity leave. So you need to think about um, what are the things that you might miss out as a locum GP. If you become sick, you won't get any income because you're a self-employed. Um, you need to think about what you will do if you become sick. To ensure for any sickness, one of the things that you could do is to subscribe to an income protection cover. So for example, myself, I have subscribed to an insurance protection cover, so if I fall sick, then I know that there will be a plan that I would not have to worry about financial problems if I fall sick. So this is something that you need to think about. So there are different income protection insurance cover uh, that you could go to. Uh, you need to think about how long can you sustain without having the income. Depending on the monthly payment that you'd like, then the insurance provider will calculate your insurance premium and this is a fee that you need to pay to ensure that you have a cover. Another disadvantage of locuming is that you might not have a constant flow of income. So there are weeks that you might not be booked or 
there are weeks that um, there might not be enough work so it really depends on the demand and supply um, the price that you are able to charge will also depend on the demand and supply as a locum you need to be organized and the extra paperwork that you need to complete for example if you are a locum and you're pensioning your work then you need to ask a practice manager to fill in the locum form a and locum form b you also need to think about sending invoice and making sure that you keep a record of your expenses you make sure that you're organized in planning your weeks because you don't want to be double book um, so it's very important to have a, a good way of organizing your work there are different softwares that you could use to organize your work and help you with invoicing and pensioning your work so there are websites such as locum organizer and locum deck that you could look into so these are very good tools that you can use to help you save time being a self-employed as a locum you also need to think about doing your tax return it's important to keep a record of your expenses of your income and to make sure that um, your business side of locuming is kept separate from your personal side it is recommended to get a qualified accountant who could help you with the account and finance size of locuming. One other disadvantage of locuming is that you might feel isolated because you're not really part of a team. So what happens is that if you go to work in a practice as a locum, somebody will show you the room for the session or for the day and you just crack on with consulting patients and then at the end of your session then you'll just leave. So there's not much interaction with other team members and you don't really have that support from team members because you're not really part of that team. So some people don't like that. Um, this is why they might want to do a salaried job or become a partner. So it's very important to know whether this will fit you or not. Another disadvantage is that you may not have continuity of care. So if you're very worried about a patient and um, you might not see that patient, you might not know what happened afterwards. So um, sometimes it can feel a bit isolated and the fact that you're a locum, you might not come back to the practice again. So it's very important that you choose which practice you're working in. And if you need to actually hand over something, then there'll be a clinician there who you can hand over to if there's something important that you're worried about. There are different methods of getting work as a locum GP. The first one is going through an agency, a locum agency. Going through a locum agency will help you in terms of you'll have less paperwork because you will be employed by the locum agency. The locum agency will provide you with the work and um, you won't have to worry much about um, invoicing practices. The caveat to that is that the locum agency will have their terms and conditions. So if you're working as a locum in a locum agency, then um, they might have a, a close work. You're not able to seek work on your own. So you need to go through them all the time and they'll take a cut from it. So this is where you're going through a middleman. The other way of doing it is you can contact practitioners yourself so you can email practitioners and let them know that you're a newly qualified GP and you're starting locuming so then the practice will um, know about you and they will let you know if they need any locum cover let's take a look at some locum adverts as you can see on the advert the practice is advertising for um, a GP and this is what they require it's important to think about what are the needs of the practice and whether you're able to provide the service and um, think about the fee that you will charge for that. It's very important that you brush up your CV if you're applying for any new job, regardless whether it's locum, partnership or a salary GP. Um, chances are if you have been in training, you have not updated your CV. So make sure that you update your CV, have a career statement in there where you actually um, highlight your strength and your aspiration and make sure that it is aligned to the uh, job that you're applying. It's very important that you research the practices that you're interested to apply for work. I'm going to give you a free template that will enhance your application. A well-designed CV can make all the difference to help you land your desired job. 
Most people use Microsoft Words to draft their CV. If you want to stand out of a crowd, I've got a CV template I'd like you to have. This is a template I've personally used and got really good feedback. If you want to use this template and customize it for yourself, click the link down in the description below. As a locum, it's important that you're able to work and adapt quickly to different changes in the environment because you might find that you're working a practice on Monday and on Tuesday you're working a different practice with different system. So it's important to highlight what are your set of skills and how this will be helpful for the practice and what do you bring to the practice. Negotiating the terms and agreeing what type of service you're willing to provide is very important because you don't want to go in your practice and then you learn that you're the only GP working on that day and you were not prepared for that. So it's important to ask questions to the practice manager whether there's going to be other clinicians there, is a session going to be an on-call session or is this going to be a normal session. You may ask whether there are going to be nurses, if you need a patient to have an ECG, whether that's available. Practical things that you might need to know as a locum is what is a way of referral? How do you refer a patient for x-ray? What about blood requests? So these are the things that you need to ask. The other thing to think about is to ask the practice about the clinical system that they use, whether they use Vision or MS Web. And if they're using any other system, are you comfortable working on this system? You can also ask the practice to provide you with a unique username for the, using the clinical system because it's important for um, yourself so that uh, when you're making an entry, it goes in as your name. It doesn't go as a locum, a generic username. Also about parking situation, whether there's allocated parking for the staff members or whether you might have to actually park somewhere uh, close to the practice. So it's important to think about these things. It's important to be clear on the types of work that you agree before going in the practice because then you know and they have the same expectation as you as to what you're going to provide and um, you don't have any surprise. Be sure to grab a free copy of your CV template, link in the description. If you've made it to the end of this video, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notification bell so that you're notified first each time I publish a new video. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please let me know down in the comment section. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.